Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video is not fun for me and I have a bad feeling about it, but I'm gonna make it anyway, so hopefully it helps you. We are here on the 545F10 and I've been having some issues with the car and I'm going to diagnose it today and test it before I probably drop 2K into it. So I believe I have a faulty or defective eccentric shaft and the motor. It's a unit goes together usually. Uh, I've seen other people that change the motor first, then a couple months, maybe one or two years max down the road, they change the shaft also. That's just not on a, based on the feel, but I did read the car out a couple of days ago. Um, I had some issues then with my power supply, so I couldn't complete my diagnosis. I got messages telling me that the shaft is too stiff. Symptoms I had over the past weeks and even months. There was one issue I've been having with the car and I thought it was due to the tune because when I got my um, fuel com pump control module and the pump replaced, everything, you know, broken new, um, it was back to stock. And I don't know what's the matter with this computer here making tons of noise today, probably also its way out. And when it was stock, I felt like the problem does, doesn't exist. And as soon as I flashed it back to my stage one, it had the same issue again. So I thought it's a fuel supply problem and I haven't really diagnosed it. I never went along, had no time for that. Now I believe it's more related to the eccentric shaft. And the problem I had that when I was accelerating high load, low RPMs, like 2000 to like 4000 maybe, the car would kind of jerk as if the torque curve has a dip in there. And it goes again, instead of straight torque, you know, constant acceleration, it would dip down, dip down. So to me, that's even misfire, I never had any codes. Or fuel supply is dropping, had no reason to, had a new pump in there, everything was new on the fuel supply side. So I don't think it was that either, but I never got around to actually diagnose it. But recently, since my, it's the Valvetronic, that is the, the system called, that includes the eccentric shaft and the motor, of course, it's a Valvetronic motor. Since that is turned off, it's been deactivated by the car as a security measure. I tested just today and I had smooth acceleration. So I believe that symptom may be related to this. Because if the system is turned off and the car is fine, then yeah, it's kind of, you know, close by. Another problem I had over the last couple of weeks is that on the cold start, instead of whiffing high, it actually would whiff low and it was about to choke itself off. That was something that never happened before and I knew there's probably something off, just didn't have the time to look into it. Until I got a error message on the dashboard telling me, you know, drive train malfunction, blah, blah. And when I checked codes, it gave me two codes, basically. The Valvetronic has been out of range too often, I had issues adjusting and it happened so often that it turned the system off entirely. And the car can do that because then it just defaults to the throttle body that's also installed. And it just once like a normal car with fixed valve lift, you can feel the system does change something because once it's turned off the car is not as smooth anymore especially when you go off gas now you can tell there's a just a butterfly valve in the throttle body that closes instead of the valves kind of slowly you know changing that making it smoother also i noticed the fuel consumption is higher than usually that is what makes me believe with the codes that i have a electronic issue and the way you diagnose it you need a tester for that and you can reset your adaptions. You have like a bump stock, like a hard stop. It's just a little metal piece where the shaft comes on both sides and it just plays within that range. And you can reset it and you can reteach that. But in order to reteach it, you need ISTA and you need more than 13 volt on there. And my little trickle charger wasn't able to keep that up. Got a new one now, I'm gonna show you in a moment what I constructed here. That should be able to do the job. And with that, I'm going to, of course, first clear arrows, whatever is there, and reteach this. The measurement plan called for activating the Valvetronic because it shut itself off. And then activating actually should include deleting adaptions and reteaching the stops. So what happens, you have a, a warm drive and that warm drive starts skipping. So to secure power supply, I got myself a power max, it's a 100 amp, and I just got a um, dropper cable, a voltmeter in there, so I can observe that, hook that up, and that should be able to give me enough juice. So let's see, this shows me 12.9, there's no switch on this box, you just turn it on, Beeps, it's green, no sparks, nothing exploded, 
14 4 that should be enough got the box hooked up now it's gonna start to reach this thing out but the fact that this laptop is now making such noises is of course fantastic anyway need out the car complete identification and also on the test will take some time let's see if i can reteach the electronic this time and if it wouldn't let me then i gotta toss some money at it again but what happened here the rubber is just deteriorating oh wow that is that's new is this just sitting on there or is this one part i have not seen that before this is first for everything oh it's a part of it wow to fix that thing to fix this i have to replace the entire cover here fantastic you hear that stuttering uh, that probably is the Reftronic skipping it should make that sound it should just go zip, zip from stop to stop and not the stuttering that it's doing and that's why i believe it's mechanics um i had issues before like i mentioned where it feels like it's losing torque for a moment for like a skip second well if your Reftronic is adjusting and it skips you lose torque it's that simple and then it comes back catches again catches again but it's not where it should be and you could maybe adjust it teach it in again and it might work but if the the warm gear is worn out so far it will just repeat itself oh no engine tuning detected oh no problems we have this is related to it's a different jve i have in here uh, that apparently wasn't coded correctly and the dme hop onto the dme check the codes and we have i chose all of them anyway engine tuning detected the blinds this is the jbe and valvetronic like i mentioned earlier fault range check so i have designed it but what i believe is you have a range like i mentioned it goes from one side stop minimum to maximum stop and let's just say it needs 10 rotations to go to full range and it does that one way and then the other way back and if that doesn't match exactly the 10 rotations or 3600 degrees if you want to call it like that it's more accurate then if the spread is too large it's going to throw a code because apparently it's slipping somewhere and if it runs the same you know test two three times and the angles are not repetitive they're not repeating itself then you have a problem there so that's what i believe the range check is and mass adaption outside tolerances the system adapts itself you know if there's a little slippage it can adapt but if it's too far then that's it and actually last time it told me also it's turned off the system so now we're just gonna go do a test plan see what it tells me activation of electronic is what it tells me and that should include deleting adaptions relearning the, the range, the full stops, all the stuff here. So the system can activate again. I've seen other people change their Revtronic and also the Accenture Craft, and they did two different ones. Because maybe the system wasn't deactivated, I'm, I'm not sure. But they just deleted adaptions and learned the new stops. So the system knows what's the range. And then just when the one in cycle, which is 100 cycles, maybe 200 depending how much it needs it just goes all, complete you know all the way and that should do if you activate it it should probably do the same yeah stiff or deactivated by electronic system that's what it told me before and that's why it's turning it off charger must be connected now we clearly at 13.9 volt just checking start engine hey here's the key come on Now it's going into new limits. 
Und den Off Ignition on. Yes. And once would three times. And it has failed. So it is kind of a problem. Try it again. So for that, the control unit has to be reset. That means it turns itself off. And it turns itself on again. That stuttering, that's the problem. Is it doing it or do I have to push anything now? Okay, it's failed again. <laughs> uh, well, this is just the same diagnose you would have if I were to bring it into the dealer. Or you bring it into the dealer and have the same problem. That is what happens. They run it full. Car turns itself off. And now it's gonna come back. Restart it. And that's the last time it's gonna test. failed twice so it has failed please replace revtronic servo motor eccentric shaft oil spray nozzle that kit is like 80 1900 dollar at fcp euro plus tax it's like 22100 yay fantastic so much for the diagnosis. And that's just a little nice advice, you know. Make sure you got this long time PD1, whatever that is, grease. And yeah, I am too tired to be pissed because I knew that's gonna happen. Um, you could drive the car. The car drives perfectly fine. Other than, as I mentioned, it uses more gas. It's not as smooth and it has it loses a little bit of power and it has components that are not doing anything so you see the test plan based on the the fault that had the electronic is deactivated in order to activate the lift one through that and it couldn't teach in the positions in order to be the max range so i'm still going to try to do just gonna go and i'm going to show you some other things it doesn't hurt and at least you see, I think, was it Grant Johnson that did it this way? Instead of going through the faults, he just went search for it to find the processes you can do. So activation of electronic is what I just tried, failed. And you can, this is the limit positions and adaptions. And I think then they, he did a startup after that. But you can just do that also, have a look. You can read if you like. The same thing, it just failed, relearning the end positions. Well, let's see if it does that. Maybe it doesn't even let me because it has that fault stored that the system is deactivated. So briefly start and then stop it again. Stopping. Ignition on. See what it does. Another symptom I heard from other people is that when the car idles, it is it's sawing. So meaning it's going up and down. It's not keeping a stable idle. I didn't have that problem. So let's repeat the service function. See if it does it. It does not. Uh, maybe the system has to be activated in order to do that. That's what it is. Let's try another service function. Start up with tonic. Seeing people do that. Uh, hasn't been changed. Teaching errors, yep, are present. Adjustment problems are present. Control, the activation errors present. Yep. Let's just try that. Got that. 
deleting adaptions again. Oh, okay, now I gotta turn it off. Turn the ignition off. And you have to wait for it to kinda semi fall asleep. You can test it by observing this green light here. When this turns off, it's good. And when the green light on the shifter knob here turns off, you're already ready to go. Just wait a minute and see if this service plan does anything. And by the way, I'm leaning here on my R90. It's all the BMW. It's all BMW other than this skateboard over here. That's, that would be a Mercedes <laughs> with a rear engine. If you haven't seen this, go check it out. It's like a complete build series. I got this bike in boxes with just the front end somewhat complete. No transmission in there. The rear subframe completely off. And I'm rebuilding this thing. And I'm done with the rear end. And it's incredibly loud. I'm still going to finish the front end. But yeah. It's also a fun little build here. Lights are off. Going to turn on the ignition again, I guess. Yep. And when I turn the ignition on, it's probably going to run through it again until you hear this rattling again. Okay, let's run this. Little position is being taught in. Are they though? I don't hear anything. Okay. This is finished. I don't think it did anything. It just told me that there are faults stored and I guess because of that it can't do it. I can't use the software to fix this issue. I have to replace the mechanical parts. Yay! Anyway, this video was just, you know, trying to show you the diagnosis of this problem. Um, what symptoms I had, also what others had. What the mechanics would do at the dealer also. They don't have any other tools really than this also. And that's what it looks like. And they run that through. Takes about half an hour. They of course bill you for that. And then they tell you to drop a couple thousand dollar and get your eccentric shaft replaced. I'm gonna do this in another video in the future. This was just diagnosis and symptoms, a little bit behind the scenes, and also a good chargeless setup. If you need to code anything, have some stable voltage, you need a box like this. I think for the cables and that. 100 amp power max paid 250 you can get it cheaper i think i saw the same thing cheaper on rd express but i didn't have like three four weeks to wait for it i want to get the diagnosis done so yeah i hope this video is helpful to you and you know drop a like if it is and maybe subscribe to the channel because well that eccentric shaft and revtronic motors doesn't change itself and i'm going to document it i have some not some, but like a ton of other things going on here. You saw the bike, you saw the skateboard. I will also look into the rod bearings on this N55 somewhere in the future because my oil pan is dripping. Not dripping, but it's moist. So I want to take care of that. There's also an X5 that gets another reboot. So there's plenty of content still coming. Just get to it slowly. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. This is just on the side of hobby. Appreciate your support for real. Thanks for watching. And I hope I'm going to see you in the next video.